Welcome to Living Life on the Max with Keisha B. Spivey, a weekly podcast that will challenge you and encourage you to live your best life yet. Hello there and welcome to Living Life on the Max. I get the joy of being your host today and talking to you through a series of things that I believe will challenge you, it will charge you, and it'll help you re- think some of the things that you're thinking about. It'll help shift your perspective on how you're seeing some things and just help you to become a little more open to becoming a better version of yourself. You know, I just finished up a series with you guys talking about being a giant killer, and now I am going a different direction. Yes, we've killed some giants and we've learned how to navigate some problems, but now I want to talk to you today in a new series called It's an Inside Job. It's an inside job. This series is really going to help you walk through some things, learn some things, and see yourself in a different way. You know, if I had to subtitle this particular lesson, I would call it Under Construction. Under Construction. If you're a note taker, write that thing down because we're going to talk about it in a little more detail in just a few minutes. But I just want to take you back for a moment. Have you, can you remember a time when you could eat dinner and there weren't any cell phones? Can you remember sitting out on the porch, maybe with a grandparent, sitting outside, you know, shooing off flies, you know, looking at lightning bulbs? Do you remember seasons in your life that were uninterrupted without technology? Just think about that for a moment. Do you remember when you could just live and things weren't buzzing, things weren't beeping, notifications weren't coming, and you were just kind of going through life? You know, we are literally a generation that's losing the art of communication and we're losing the art of intimacy. You know, people don't know how to carry on a conversation with each other. You know, kids rather text than talk. And this is creating such a disconnection. You know, it's impacting the world. It's impacting families. And even from a more up close and personal perspective, it's impacting your personal growth and it's impacting your development. There's a whole lot of noise. There's a whole lot of things happening and you are being impacted whether you believe it or not. Let me help this get a little more plain for you. You know, we don't even know how to spend time alone with ourselves. We pick up the phone. We cut on the TV. We cut on the radio. We're listening to something. We're doing something. We don't know how to sit still with ourselves. We don't know how to spend time with other people. All you got to do is be in a restaurant and look at people eating dinner together and everybody's got a device. So we don't know how to spend time alone with ourselves. If we don't know how to spend time alone with other people, we definitely don't know how to get still and spend time with God. I want you to think about that. If you can't be still with you, how likely are you to be still with God? I think that sometimes God reminds us that we've been listening to too much noise. We've been too busy. So he literally takes us into a place that requires us to get quiet, that requires us to hang out with him, that requires us to get still and say what's happening. You know, as I was preparing for this, I thought about this space and this place and all the times I've been there and many times I've sat there. And it's almost like God hangs out a sign on the doorpost of your life that says under construction. Have you ever been there where you felt like you were under construction? There were pieces of you, you didn't even know where they were. There were tools, there was all this stuff around and you were trying to figure it out. But your life looked like you were under construction. I think sometimes God takes us to this place because he sees how the loudness of life and the distractions of this world is causing us to drift away from him. And it's causing us to drift away from purpose. He sees how stuff and situations are keeping us from serving him at full capacity. And they're keeping us from being who he has called us to be. So he puts us, uh, puts us under construction. He puts a sign out that says, wait a minute, there's some things in you. There's some things about you. There's some things going on around you that needs to be dealt with. So he hangs the sign out and he says, under construction. And sometimes those places of being in the the garage or being under construction or being wherever we are in the field, whatever, they're not comfortable. 
they're not convenient. They're not the places that we would have liked to have been, but it's that place that we find ourselves. And I think when we get into those places and we realize that we're under construction and we yield to the process, I believe that's when God starts strengthening the areas that are weak in us. I think that's when he starts replacing the noise of all the demands on your life and on your time with the longing for the divine. I think we have to get into that place called under construction for us to go through a reset, for us to get still. For us to take an inventory of where we are and who we are, how we got there, who we're hanging out with, the things that we're exchanging our life for, I think we get to that place and we have to get still to see how far we've drifted. We have to get still to realize that we have gotten out of the rhythm of grace, that we've allowed life and noise and distractions and technology and people and deadlines and all these to-dos to create a rhythm of pace in our lives that opposes the rhythm of grace. We start doing and going and being in places we're not even supposed to be. We're saying yes to things that we should have said no to. And if we had a got still, if we would have gotten quiet, we would have realized, hold on a minute, I am simply the clay. He's the potter. It's his job to mold me. It's his job to shape me. And not only me, but how about my calendar? How about my life? How about my wants? It's his job to position me and create in me that which he desires for me. I think it's when we get into that construction place, when we get into a place of being under construction That God reminds us that this is an inside job. So often I get busy out here trying to do stuff and trying to make stuff happen because things aren't happening as fast as I want or it's not looking like I want it to look. And God pulls me into that place and puts me under construction and he reminds me, wait a minute. Inside of you, Keisha, inside of every true believer is the Holy Spirit. He's inside of you providing every single thing you need to handle life's problems, to handle life's opportunities. What you're looking for out there is on the inside of you. It's an inside job. If it's only when we go into this under construction place that we realize we cannot fix ourselves. We cannot fix other people. We cannot carry the cares of this world on our backs. We're not capable and neither were we supposed to. We were not called to. We're not designed to. But sometimes we get out here and we get to trying to go and do and become and achieve and accomplish. And we forget that every single thing that we need to succeed, everything that we need to be at the level of success that we're looking for and that we're aiming for, all of that's already on the inside of us. Victory is already on the inside of us. It's not with another award. It's not with another dollar sign. It's not with another completed project. It's on the inside of us. You know, Philippians 1, 6 says, and I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. He who began a good work in you, that he's going to complete that thing. You have to understand that God has begun a good work in your life. I don't know where you are in the construction process, but you are under construction. You know, it could be that you're not even a follower of Jesus Christ yet. But the fact that you're listening today may be the beginning of him walking you to a season where he's able to start constructing your life the way he designed it. Or maybe you're listening and you're a seasoned saint and you've lost faith. You know, maybe disappointments or delays have got you in doubt And God sent me here today to remind you, wait a minute, he has begun a good work in you. He has begun a good work in you. Not only has he begun a good work, he's doing a work. God is doing a work in your life. Your life is not the product of a random series of unrelated circumstances. You are a work under construction. God has a design for you. Your experiences are not a sum total of coincidences. It is not. Nothing is never just happening. God is always doing something. You just got to ask yourself, are you yielded to what he's doing? Have you surrendered to being under construction? And lastly, you need to understand that God will finish what he started in your life. God's a finisher. 
He will finish what he started. He's not improvising and making up a plan for you from day to day. No, he's working intentionally. He's got a plan. You need to remember that a good construction product has both the desired outcome and a plan for achieving it. There's always a plan to get it done. And likewise, you need to know that God has a goal in mind for your life. And he's methodically moving you closer to that goal. You've got to understand that his goal for you is to become more like him. His goal for you is to, to walk out everything he purchased for you. His goal for you is to be a masterpiece that's reflecting who he is and bringing him glory. His goal for you is for you to finish the race that he set before you so that when it is done, when you take your last breath, you will hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. His goal for you is to finish. But you can't finish without yielding to the construction process. And let me help you with something. We don't always like the process. We don't always like what's required to build us up. Because sometimes before you build something up, you got to tear some things down. If it's got a faulty foundation, that foundation has to be torn up before something can be built upon it. So we may not always like the way it feels. We may not always like the amount of time that it takes. So the process may not be cool and it may not be comfortable, but we're not told to like the process. What we're told is to love the processor. And we need to realize that the processor loves you. And you've got to trust him. you got to trust that he's sovereign. And you've got to trust that the plan he has for you is a good plan. You've got to trust that all things are working out together for your good. Even if the construction process is painful. you got to believe that God's going to squeeze every bit of that pain until it comes into a place of purpose. You've got to believe that he's going to take the from the piles that were under construction and he's going to make something beautiful. So stop fighting the construction process and surrender. Just be clay. Let him mold you. Let him make you. Because I promise you that thing that he has planned for you, that thing that he has prepared for you is greater than your mind can imagine. I believe it's so amazing that eyes haven't seen and ears haven't even heard how awesome it is. So yeah, stay in that place of surrender and let God finish that thing he started in you. If this message has encouraged you, please share it with a friend. If you know someone who's struggling with the process, share it with them. If it's blessed you, my heart's desire is that it will bless them as well. And so until we chat again, you know my word to you is do you to the max. So God bless you and I'll see you soon.